Speaker, the President's attempt to sanitize the lived reality of South Africans fell flat on Thursday night. His revisionist and dishonest fairy tale is an insult to those who know the truth. They know the truth because they live it. They know what was told to them was a lie concocted by a bunch of speechwriters and not the daily nightmare that was once touted as the new dawn. I would like to perhaps assist the President to understand how the other side lives. I would like to introduce him to real stories of real South Africans. His fictional character, Tinsualo, a child born without democracy, is an exception and not the rule. In this country, the reality of young people is too bleak for words. Let me introduce you to Tabang, Mr. President, a 29-year-old man born in 1995. His family has lived in Alexandra all his life, and his entire worldview is characterized by lack, by poor service delivery, joblessness, and hopelessness. None of his family members have made it out or escaped the clutches of poverty. And under the Ramaphosa presidency, there's no hope that he ever will. Despite his matric qualification, he's unlikely to ever get an opportunity to study further or get a job that will give him a life of the dignity that he deserves. In fact, he was there, Mr. President. He was there when, in the heat of an election campaign, you, Mr. Prom Mr. President, promised the people of Alex one million new homes. He watches with dismay when you speak tough on corruption, yet your very own Deputy President, Paul Mashatile, has been embroiled in the looting of money meant for the Alex Renewal Project. Tabang watches with dismay when you, Mr. President, speaks tough on corruption, when allegations of corruption and looting have been leveled against the Deputy President of the South African Republic, and he sits right next to you, how do you expect young people to take you seriously when in your very own cabinet you, say, you sit there and you entertain people who have been have allegations leveled against him? Your hypocrisy is not lost on him. He does not need to be sold a lie, Mr. President. He wakes up to a nightmare of broken promises every day. And he's unlikely and he's very likely to be persuaded to a life of crime. Because quite frankly, the life that young people in South Africa are living is hell in South Africa. Allow me, Mr. President, to also introduce you to Langalam Vigi from Ekomani, a three-year-old child who died inside a pit toilet because your government failed to uphold basic human rights of learners in schools. Yours, Mr. President, is a government that has trapped an entire generation of poor black children to a life of poverty. I would like to remind you, Mr. President, of Bonge Gabuso and her children, Anati Arabile and Uratile. Bonge was a mother of three children, Mr. President, from Ektuwa, who decided to end her life and her children's due to the poverty crisis that has been engulfing millions of South Africans across the country. Bongega, Mr. President, made a choice that no mother in this country should ever have to make. She decided to end her life so that she can stop looking at her children's expectant faces every day with no hope in sight. South Africa is not a poor country. It is unfair and unconstitutional that anybody should go to bed hungry every night. It is simply, South Africa is simply a country that is poorly led by an uncaring government. It is a crime, Mr. President, that severe malnutrition for children under the age of five has risen by 26%. We know that 12,000 children die in hospital, have died in hospital since 2013. And most recently, the census has revealed that at least two million households in this country are experiencing hunger and forced to skip a meal a day. These are not just numbers. These are people who put their trust in you and you have let them down. 
eyo nandi mshungu ye yekuba kudala abandu bene monde kudala belinde lo hulmende o waeba tembi se ubo mobu putu gileyo kudala abandu beginya no ba kukaka bene temba kuba no koni zate ni kuzane ninga baye ke libe chakala liswa inzala elo temba lipelile Baya bona ubana lo ukulmenda upetwe nga abandwa bazimisele ukuti mali yoluntu bate baishloche lentoko. Sebe ikonda ukuba lona umbuto we ANC aisengu ulo babe mazi. Seba ya yazi hindo bana lona umbuto ngumbuto kwa shageleyo. Hindo wane niba kwa shagalele kanga aga banbo mzanza Afrika. Kwa baka logu hingo shagala mwanga meli hindo ya abandwa by 30 million abanga abina kutia umshane zolo. Hingo shagalo mwanga meli hindo bana abandwa bacha abanga fumani misebenzi. Betaka meli langa kumakaya befumba te izitanga eza zifunyanwe mwanzimeni. Hingo shagalo mwanga meli hindo ya abandwa na abasweleka yo indala in 2024. And to add insults to injury, our people are gaslit by the ANC government when they hold you to account. Their loyalty is demanded and they are routinely reminded to how be grateful to the ANC. What is clear from the president's reluctance to account, recount the key tangible deliverables of the past term is that these are few and far between. He decided to do some fancy footwork on Thursday by focusing on the past 30 years instead of focusing on his five years in government. You see, he too is ashamed of his record in government. He too knows that South Africans are worse off today than they were in 2019 when he took over that office. And he too knows that his government's time is up. The people have finally seen through your sloganeering, which does not translate to real change for the people who need it most. Your fudging of the numbers fools no one because people should not have to be told about your record in government, they should experience it. And so as we look towards a post-ANC South African democracy, it is clear that we need a serious alternative government, a government that will not demand another 30 years from office from the people that it serves, a government that is content with being on a five-year contract to deliver against its promises. And looking at these benches, I can tell you, Mr. President, political party. You certainly cannot be trusted with mending the very thing that you once broke. And so I would like to turn my attention in particular to the people at home to speak to you directly. I want to assure you that in Klungu Yabandu Ben Numbandu Basem Zanz Africa does not fall on deaf ears. An alternative is within reach, a caring government that works for you. Ukulmende ozan kupa ebu kwa ibeni, ani kupe enchupe gweni, ukuze ni pile ubomi onani butenji siwe 30 years ago. Allowing people to languish in poverty has been one of the most spectacular failures of this government, but it doesn't have to be this way. A DA-led government, amongst other things, would prioritize creating jobs and lifting people out of poverty. The seven out of ten young people at home who do not have work, I want to assure you, you will be gainfully employed. I want to ensure you that we, unlike Sil and Honorable Sylvia Lucas, will not tell you that it, 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 load shedding is not the end of the world. We will make sure that we solve the energy crisis so that you can find a job, so that you can live a life of dignity. <laughs> to deal with the crippling poverty, we would increase the child support grant to the same level as the official poverty line. This child support grant would ensure that it covers pregnant mothers to support child nutrition. We would make sure that this SRD grant that conclude, is in place will make sure that it is, it is essentially turned, turned into a job seekers fund. As a caring government, we would ensure that a safety net for the most vulnerable in our society is there. These interventions are fully costed. They are sustainable, they are needed and they are urgent. 
They will save lives. This is the pledge I'm making to the people at home. I want to assure you, help is on the way. It's not coming from this side Your of the house. Time is up. But it's coming from this side of the house.